correction, or instruction in righteousness. The American Heritage Dictionary defines doctrine as a principle or system presented for acceptance or belief, a rule or principle of law. Why biblical doctrine matters? Yeah? Because lives are at stake and it is appointed unto every man once to die and then face judgment, it is imperative that we teach the truth of God's word because it builds discernment and, re and reveals the will of God for our lives. It prepares us for every good work it stirs the heart and mind when taught early and consistently builds a faith that lasts, convicts those that contradict the truth. Because there has been a vast falling away from biblical truth, teaching biblical doctrine is extremely important, helps to destroy false teaching that is, that is destroying lives. Biblical doctrine will last forever. What you heard from me, keep as the pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy 1.13 Reproof. The act, an instance, or an expression of reproving, rebuke, to criticize or reprove sharply, reprimand. The cost of bold dis discipleship. In Matthew 16.13, we find the incidents when Jesus had entered the coast of Caesarea Philippi with his disciples. He had asked them, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Then he asked them, but whom say ye that I am? Then in verses 16 through 19, Jesus had blessed Peter, called him the rock on which the church would be built, and given him the keys of the kingdom in verses 21, 23. Matthew 16 through 21 gives the account of that whole episode. Jesus rebuked Satan because of Peter's response. Jesus knew the assignment on Peter's life. He had to remove the characteristics of the old Peter. Peter leaned to his own understanding. Jesus had to help him renew his thinking. Sometimes we think that we are doing something that is necessary and correct only to need rebuking because we were out of order in our doing. We all will go through rebuke when being developed and trained for ministry, which is a necessary process. So if and when you are rebuked, receive it for what it is, love, correction, something offered or substituted for a mistake or fault, punishment intended to rehabilitate or improve. The term chasing in scripture is used to describe acts of discipline, correction, and corporal punishment. According to the Bible, the Lord's chastening is considered painful and unpleasant. Hebrews 12, 11, intended as a rebuke or reprimand to change one's behavior. However, the purpose of chastening is not to destroy you, Psalms 118, 18, but to lead you to repentance, Jeremiah 31, 18 through 19, and to restore God's blessings upon your life, Psalms 94, 12. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 tells us not to despise the chastening correction of the Lord. Glory be to God. Amen. Two types of people in the Bible, they are sons of God and bastards. Mm. Which are you? The Lord desires not for any to perish. He chastens those who he loves. He dis disciplines his children so that they will not become bastards. Hebrew 12, 8. Now, if you are exempt from correction and left without discipline in which all of God's children share, then you are illegitimate offspring and not true sons at all. Hebrews 12, 5 through 11, I won't read for the sake of time. <laughs> Hallelujah. Instruction. Imparted knowledge and authoritative direction to be obeyed and ordered. Psalms 32, 8. I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. In Psalms 32, 8, the Lord himself will instruct and teach us to walk in the way of integrity. His holy word and the counsel of the Holy Spirit will guide us along the way. As servants of the Lord, we are to take our cues from the Lord. We should obey the slightest hints of our master, not needing to be shocked or to be startled. Oh, uh, 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 hallelujah. Our habitual sluggishness, but being controlled by whispers and love touches from the Lord. Mm -hmm. We should be sensitive to his leading and move right. when we are instructed to. The Lord is the great overseer whose eye and providence overlooks everything. It is well for us to be the sheep of his pasture, 
following the guidance of his wisdom and following his instructions, the inner spiritual life of the individual believers will grow stronger. Second Timothy 4, 1 through 3. I'm not going to read it for the sake of time. Hallelujah. But.